Hey guys, this is Claudia here from the Bookkeeping Experts. I'm back for more. And today we're going to talk about the next most important uh, report in QuickBooks Online. That is the balance sheet. Why is the balance sheet so important? What's in there? <laughs> That's what we're going to cover today. So I'm excited to share with you a few insights on how to read your balance sheet and understand what's going on. So without much further ado, here we go. All right. So here is our sample account. Um, and I wanted to show you how to get to the reports. If you don't know, this is the accountant view, by the way, you can change it back and forth right over here on the top right hand side menu. Um, and then if you want to get to reports, uh, balance sheet is right here. Okay. This is a very important report. So this one tells, uh, how much is your company worth? What is the bottom line after, after all the expenses, all the assets, all the liabilities, what's your bottom line? This report is specifically important for banks. If, if you want to get finance, uh, they're going to take a look at your balance sheet. And also if you have partners, uh, and things like that, or if you were bringing a partner, they want to, they want to take a look at what's what's uh, what's your company really worth, you know, with all the assets that you have in your books, minus any kind of liability um, and whatever you took from the company. What is your bottom line? All right. Um, OK, so here is Craig's design and landscaping. We're doing it this year to date. We can do it this year to last month uh, or just last month let's just do last month okay because we're going to assume here that last month is already reconciled and ready to go now keep in mind looking at your balance sheet without categorizing so that remember the workflow we talked about in the past uh, without categorizing without reconciling doesn't really mean anything because your numbers can be completely off so the bottom line is that the balance of your checking account should be the same as in your bank. So you're looking at March 31st. If your checking account balance is not this much or you're saving um, in your bank account, that means this is incorrect. So you need, you need to reconcile your account. Okay, and if it is reconciled, you want to take a look if there is any error on the reconciliation. So I like to duplicate my page. If I bring it to my mouse to the top here, right click it and duplicate. Okay, I can actually uh, <clears throat> take a look at the register. If, if, if you look at your bank account, say, oh, this is completely off. Okay, so first thing I would take a look is your bank balance. So I'm sorry, your bank register. So you duplicate this, it does not letting me duplicate, or you can go on the left hand side chart of accounts. Okay, this is a sample account. So sometimes it doesn't always work the way we want to come on. Come on. There it is. Okay. We're going to view register. Obviously here, it looks like it's off. See bank balance versus QuickBooks balance. Once again, this is just a simple account, so we're not going to pay attention to that. But if on the perfect world, when all transactions have been accepted, it needs to match, right? That's the bottom line. All right. So one, one way for me to find out if there is any incorrect reconciliation, I will look at the last day that it was reconciled. I'm going to click on this funnel over here. And I'm going to put the date up to the date that was reconciled. Let's so suppose it was reconciled. This was not never reconciled, by the way. This is just a simple account. Let's suppose March 31st. And under reconcile status, I'm going to put not reconcile. And then apply. And this is where I find, okay, if there's a ton of transactions that have not been reconciled, even though the account says it's been reconciled, then uh, we know there's a problem. We just need to undo this reconciliation and start all over again. Because obviously there are transactions who have, that have not been cleared. So a true reconciliation, my friends, means every transaction is reconciled except for the one that didn't clear until the following month. Okay, so back to last month, I'll change it to cash. 
uh, and run report. Um, okay, so uh, remember we talked about last week about your statement of cash flow. Um, so your bottom number on the statement of cash flow is this number here. So it's your cash on the bank. Okay, so all your bank accounts will will, will uh, end up with the end balance of your statement of cash flow so that you know all right so important number to look here is undeposited funds you want to make sure that this undeposited funds is here because it, the the checks that you receive the payment you receive um you haven't deposited yet right because if you have deposited match in banking this one should be zero remember undeposited funds is a temporary account it's just holding the payment until you actually deposit the money and then you have to record the date of the report the 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 date of the deposit the amount of the deposit and matching in banking so that you can zero out this account now be aware that a lot of times uh accountants will just unfortunately do a journal entry to clean up undeposited funds you know the problem about that okay there's a huge problem, and that is if you do a journal entry, um, this journal entry will always be under bank deposit, okay? Cluttering your bank deposit. So uh, remember, all the undeposited funds will be sitting on bank deposits, waiting for you to record the deposit. So you do plus new bank deposit, all the, all the undeposits. See here, 2062, we saw this number. So that is where it's coming from. Those are transactions that have not cleared yet. So if they have cleared, like I said, you have to make sure that you record the deposit and you match it in banking. Must match or else you're duplicating income, okay? So this is gonna sit down. Sometimes I have clients that have years of undeposited funds and they just never record that. The, the deposit and um, and that's a big problem now the undeposited funds that the workflow that that you use with undeposited funds is to protect your assets to protect your deposit to make sure that every payment is accounted for so at the end of the day if you do it correctly that account should be zero out that means that everything every deposit has been accounted for has been deposited and matched and not duplicated <laughs> okay that's important okay so undeposited fund very important um, accounts receivable is also very important because those you want to make sure that if it is an open invoices here that those uh, open invoices have not been paid or you know if if um, it became obsolete then that is removed from your books you don't want anything here that doesn't belong right so if it is open yeah it should be here this is a great tool for you to keep up with who is owing you money in reality and who um who needs to get who needs to be paid right yeah okay you need to be paid they need to pay you <laughs> okay all right so inventory asset um now with QuickBooks integration, a lot of times those numbers will be off. Um, like I said, you can't adjust with a journal entry. That's okay to adjust with a journal entry here. Not on undeposit fund, but yes, here. That's fine. Okay. All right. Uh, next is the assets. So uh, remember, the first part of your balance sheet is all assets. So your bank accounts are assets. Your accounts receivable are assets, your inventory, undeposit, those are all assets. Okay, so it means money coming into your account and if not, it's not if it's not already deposited in the bank. So is your truck, you know, trucks. Uh, you want to make sure you add all your assets to your books. It's very important. If you want your um, your reports to be looking nice and clean, you need to add those um uh, those assets because it, it will show the real value of your business if you're just not adding them it's not showing the real value of your business even if it is depreciated at least you know you know it's there you know how much is worth it because uh, if it is zero balance in the 
in the balance sheet doesn't mean that the asset does, is not worth anything. It just means that it's been fully depreciated. But of course, you can sell it in the future and earn money on, a, on a, an asset that is completely depreciated. All right. Um, okay, so first part is all the assets. And then the total assets, 23,436. That's the total assets of our sample company. And then there comes the liability. So you have the accounts payable. That is if you have at least uh, plus because you can't enter bill in QuickBooks Online unless you have plus or, or higher subscription. Um, so if you do have the bills, you want to make sure you keep up with the bills and you match them. You mark that it's paid when it's paid and you match them in banking. If not, they're going to stay here for a long, long time and it's going to be messing up your balance uh, on your balance sheet. Okay, then you have your credit cards, your credit card balance. Be aware of a negative balance on a credit card, which means that you pay more than what you owe. So there's something wrong there. So that means that account needs to be reconciled and fixed. Okay. And obviously you want to make sure that the balance here is what was on your statement the prior month, because that's what we are looking at. Uh, the current liability could be, you know, I don't know, sales tax, um, uh, payroll, payroll taxes and things like that it could be sitting over here, or it could be a short term loan. Um, uh, it could be deposits like client deposits could be whatever you are holding in behalf of somebody else so that's a liability you gotta pay it back right uh, keep in mind that if you if you accept a refundable deposit it should be in the liability account because if the customer cancel and want that money back you know you gotta refund it back so that's why it's a liability all right and it's not income until you actually satisfy the um, the service that you will provide or, or provide this, the products, whatever that you are providing to your client. Okay, you have the long-term liabilities and the notes payable, SBA loan, whatever you have here, the vehicle um, uh, loans or uh, mortgage and things like that, all should be on the long-term liability. And in the equity account, uh, you should have maybe owner's distribution to track uh, all your your owner's distribution, maybe uh, owner's contribution or partner contribution or whatever you call that. Um, so all those accounts should be here um, and they are zero out those accounts. Some of those equity accounts are zero out at the end of the year because they're just tracking your investment, tracking your um, uh, your your draws and so on and so forth the, those equity accounts are have the purpose of tracking those things right now at the end of the day you will clean it up including this opening balance cycle should be zero and and put it under retain earnings retain earnings is actually a history uh of your balance through the year so that there's you know it's a sum of um all your uh profit and loss and all the income is going to be here and retain earnings right retain earnings basically history all, all the years the profit and loss balance on the profit and loss through the years okay and first and finally the final okay the final line here is your net income which means your current year's net income on, on your profit and loss okay which is going to give you your total equity. Sometimes the equity is going to be negative because you're withdrawing money uh, and things like that. So, and sometimes we have to dump some stuff in the equity. Unfortunately, just kind of, you know, clean up prior year errors and things like that. So, and then eventually you have to clean that into retained earnings. Uh, that's that's the only way. The, the other way is just to dig in and clean up, but keep in mind that when you're cleaning up things that happened on the past, you don't want to change uh, the numbers 
where you file your taxes. You don't want to do that. You want to keep that. So that unfortunately, sometimes you will have a negative equity account here that, that is throwing off your numbers. Right? So be careful when uh, doing personal transaction and things like that because it's all going to sit down the equity account and it's going to make the company unfortunately look worse than what it is so aware careful with the equity section in your balance sheet and finally your total liabilities in equity here we have um, um, we have a positive number which is what we need to have okay so it's a sum of all your assets your liabilities in your equity accounts so that's your final number that's what banks are going to look at you know if if you're asking for i don't know a, a hundred thousand dollar loan they're going to take a look at your profit and loss verify what's your operation income uh, and then based that they 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 will approve a percentage um, and, and then they are going to take a look at the balance sheet and take a look how much debt you have and how much you can afford, you know, to pay extra. So that is very important. The bank's balance sheet, very, very, very important. So not just that, it's good for you too. You need to find out how much is your company worth. If you were to sell to somebody, you know, you show up with a, with a balance sheet with a negative number and everything is all over the place. You don't want that. You want to make sure that the numbers are correct right for yourself and for anybody else any stakeholder in your company all right so this is it for the balance sheet today all right let me go back here oh okay i'm back <laughs> okay so i hope this was useful that i hope that you were able to get something out of here to understand your balance sheet a little better use your reports Okay, the reason why you keep your books up to date, clean and nice, is so that you can use your reports. Uh, you can budget, uh, budget uh, your future income and expenses. You can plan for the future and you can take your business to the next level. Like I said, it's so important to know your point of reference. You need to know where you are in order to set your goals in the future, to aim uh, where you want to go okay you want to know where you are first and then you aim where you want to go all right so if you like this video give us a thumbs up yeah, down below today. and subscribe to our channel we'll be back every week with more information uh, with more information so you can um, uh, you can stay up to date with your QuickBooks online thanks again for watching I'll see you next week and until and until next time keep on smiling